Welcome to the build blog number six video. In this video, we'll be completing the new 3D printer build with the pieces we have in front of us here. Starting from the bottom left is the new E3D hot end Bowden mount, including the E3D clamp and fan duct. Over here, we have the clamp for the spool axle. We also have the Bowden drive mount. We have the four uh, heated bed mounts for the Z-axis. We have the Z-axis end stop and Z-axis adjustment. And finally, the Z-nut holder. First up is the Z-axis nut holder. This is the brass nut that has uh, accompanied the lead screw. This will be used for the Z-axis to lift and drop the build platform. This brass nut simply plugs into this piece here. This piece uh, will clamp onto the build plate uh, from the rear at the top and the side of the 2020 extrusion. There are three mounting points, uh, one here and, and two here into the extrusion. And you simply take the brass nut, slide it through the top of this part, line up the mounting holes and push it down. And that simply holds into place with four uh, M3 by 10 millimeter screws and nuts. I'll be moving the aluminium Mark IIb print bed from my current Prusa i3 to this new printer. And these four clamps are purely to hold the print bed in place. They clamp around the 2020 uh, extrusion on two sides, on the side and on the bottom. And on the top, which is flush with the top of the extrusion, there's simply a, a three millimeter uh, hole here. And that will allow the, uh, the screws and spring and nuts to fit through and to hold the build platform approximately uh, 10 millimeters above the aluminum extrusion. So there's four here and this is what it'll kind of look like once it's installed. To finish off the Z-axis, we need the Z-axis end stop, and here it is. It's comprised of two parts. We have the, the holder for the actual end stop itself. So this part here is mounting again on two sides of the frame on the 2020 aluminium, so it'll be uh, horizontal like that. And then this part here will actually be mounted to the rear of the, uh, the build platform itself on the aluminum extrusion. And what will happen is, uh, as the Z-axis starts to raise, it'll raise up. These parts line up, of course. And this adjustment screw at the top here, which is simply uh, held in with a nut on the back, simply uh, comes up with the build platform and activates the end stop just like that. So quite simple, but effective. Regular viewers of this channel will know exactly what this is. This is the E3D version 6 Bowden X carriage mount version 2. However, it's been modified for this 3D printer. To start off with, all the mounting screws are now M3 based, no more M4 screws. And also the height of the Bowden mount has been reduced by about five millimeters. There is still the gap within the Bowden mount to allow the fan duct to be slotted in underneath. And also the gap at the top is for a blower fan to be attached at the top to allow air to be blown over the part. The E3D simply clamps into the top piece here with the clamp, all M3 based, stops the hot end from wobbling while it's printing. And to complete the Bowden filament drive system, in front of us here is the clamp for the eight millimeter threaded rod axle which holds the spool holder in place. This part will slide onto the uh, vertical beams of the 2020 aluminium. That will allow the axle to come out this way and the filament to be slotted on like that. This part allows clamping of the eight millimeter axle uh, on, onto this part. So that should uh, eliminate any wobbling of the axle as such. And finally, this part here, which looks a bit like a boomerang, is actually the holder for the, uh, the Bowden drive system itself. I'll be uh, reutilizing the Bowden uh, drive from my current Prusa, and it'll need to mount onto those uh, mount holes. Here's the brass Z-axis nut holder uh, attached to the 2020 aluminium build plate. And as you can see, the lead screw is perfectly lined up with the two Z-axis linear rails. The lead screw is also attached uh, to the coupler, which is also attached to the uh, Z-axis stepper motor. 
And when I spin this by hand, it is moving absolutely beautifully. I'm not feeling any binding or sticking whatsoever. As I'm rotating the coupler and the whole lead screw is rotating, there's no wobbling, especially at, at the extremity here with the M5 threaded rods that I have on my Prusa i3, the tops of the M5 uh, threads just wobble back and forth with every rotation. But this one here, it is perfectly straight. I'm really happy with the way this is moving. And it just feels really nice. It feels like there's there's just no gap there. I'm really looking forward to, to seeing the Z-axis prints with this particular drive system. Looking through the top of the 3D printer, I've mounted the four bed support brackets on the 2020 build platform. So one here, one over there, one over here, and one down here. The spacing for the holes between each of these spaces is 209 millimeters. That matches the hole spacing for my uh, Mark IIb aluminium heat beds. So there's, there's 209 millimeters gap between those two, and then between those two, and those two, and those two, of course. So when it comes time to migrate all my components from my Prusa i3 to this printer, the print bed will simply slot in and mount using the screws and springs onto those mounting points. The Z-axis end stop bolts to one of the vertical posts of the frame. This can be moved up or down to suit your height requirements. The, the, the then Z-adjustment actually attaches to the rear of the build platform on the 2020 extrusion. That sticks out a bit with that adjustable screw. So then as I spin the Z-axis up, you'll see it hits the uh, end stop micro switch right about there. Is the E3D version 6 Bowden mount firmly uh, screwed into the X carriage using the M3 uh, by 20 millimeter screws? I've also attached the fan duct underneath the E3D uh, mount itself. I have a blower fan here to show you what it's going to look like when the blower fan is also installed. It's looking more and more like a 3D printer. I'll show you as well from the front of the X carriage. You can see the distance between the bottom of the X carriage to the bottom of the fan duct is about 20 millimeters, and that's the same amount of gap that I currently have on my Prusa i3 3D printer. There's a 20 to 25 millimeter gap there, so the E3D nozzle will stick about one to two millimeters below that uh, that fan duct and actually make or just make contact with the uh, with the build platform. So, getting really close now. So the spool axle holder is now installed on the vertical frame at the rear of the new printer. It is just an empty spool, so it'll be somewhat mounted like that, I guess, to the back of the 3D printer. I guess this is just personal preference, it doesn't matter if it's on this side or if it's on this side. If it's on that side, then the spool will sit like that on the side of the printer. But you'll see up here, I've got this boomerang looking piece. This is the E3D Bowden drive mount. Uh, on an angle on the corner of the 3D printer. So if I have the, the filament spool here, the filament spool's coming up this way, the Bowden uh, drive mount with the Mark 7 drive gear and so on will be sticking out here. It's going to be fed plastic from this direction, so straight out of the spool it'll come up and be fed straight over. And then from the top we'll have the PTFE tube coming out, going across to the uh, top of the E3D uh, version 6 Bowden mount over here. So, and there'll be just enough PTFE tube between the Bowden drive and the Bowden mount to cover the diagonal axe, uh, diagonal uh, cross section of the entire uh, build platform itself. So, if I'm not mistaken, that is everything designed, printed, and assembled for this new 3D printer frame. This frame is now ready to accept all of the items on my Prusa i3 are onto this new Core XY frame. It's been quite short actually, what about four, maybe five weeks since I started this build series to go from just ideas, thoughts and individual components into a fully assembled and hopefully functional 3D printer. Well, Stick around, don't go too far, because after this video, after it's uploaded, I'll be disassembling the Prusa i3, assembling all the components into this frame, and hopefully have an update for you very shortly.